Hey guys, welcome back to Okabode. Today, we're gonna talk about free-ranging chickens. It's a little bit of a controversial topic, so I'm just gonna tell you everything I can about our experience, kind of the pros to free-ranging, the cons, and just sort of our daily free-ranging schedule. As usual, I did write a blog post with all this information, so if you guys prefer to read instead of watch, you can just click the link in the description and that'll take you to our website with all the points I'm about to go over. And as always, we do link some other resources for you guys down below as well. I am now eight months pregnant, so I hope hope it's okay with you guys that I'm sitting down for this. I have chickens kind of like all around in my view, but hopefully they'll make some appearances behind me so that they can entertain you guys a little bit more than I can. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna go into are the pros of free ranging. So kind of the positive things about free ranging and why we decide to free range our hens. But there are definitely a significant list of cons as well that I will go into after the pros. Before I go too much into the specifics, I want to note that every free ranging experience is gonna be different depending on the property that you are using for your chickens. So we've so far had chickens at two different properties. One was like a suburban, small suburban lot. And this one is on some more acreage with lots of foliage and trees. And I can tell you that these two experiences are already vastly different and there are so many more kinds of properties out there. So you have to be the best judge of your property and the kind of environment that you live in. Number one, one of the biggest pros to free ranging your chickens is that they are going to consume less layer feed. So to us, this means two things. One, it means we spend less money on layer feed, which therefore means keeping chickens and the eggs that they collect are going to be a little bit less expensive. Number two, more than anything for me, it's actually kind of a convenience thing. So I, especially these days, am having a hard time lugging those big feed bags back and forth. And the fewer feed bags that I have to bring back to the barn for the chickens, the better. So one of the biggest pros to free ranging is that they consume less layer feed and that's because they're able to supplement their diet in other ways. So they're gonna eat a lot of greens, they're gonna eat a lot of vegetation, they're gonna find a lot of protein in bugs and in microorganisms and the dirt. I actually did a whole video on what to feed backyard chickens and what to feed free ranging chickens. So I'll link that video for you guys below. But in my experience, even though our chickens pretty much free range all day long, it's definitely in their best interest to still provide plenty of layer feed, which we pretty much give to them just free choice. They have free access to it whenever they want it. Pro number two, the second benefit to free ranging backyard chickens is that you get darker, more nutritious egg yolks and eggs in general. So one thing that a lot of people don't really understand about like commercial free range eggs is that a lot of companies will actually supplement the chicken's diet with specific nutrients to create a really, really dark orange, bright orange egg. In my experience, our free range hens have slightly darker eggs. Honestly, it's pretty significantly darker than like factory farm eggs. But from everything I've read, the darkest orangest yolk doesn't necessarily indicate the healthiest egg. You can research what makes egg yolks dark and orange if you want. I'm not gonna go into it mostly because I'm just not really sure how to pronounce the words. <laughs> and once you Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But yes, it is a benefit that free range eggs tend to be significantly darker than factory farm eggs and cage chicken eggs. However, I'm not necessarily gonna say that the amount of free range time correlates to the darkness of the egg. So long story short, the best part about how free ranging affects their eggs is free ranging hens are going to give you much healthier eggs. If you compare caged hen eggs, <laughs> this is hard to say, to free range hen egg, there are so many more micronutrients in eggs that come from hens that are free ranging, which is different than just cage free. So like if you go to the store and you buy cage free eggs, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're free ranging and that they're the healthiest option, which I won't go too much into here. As far as just you and your backyard flock goes, the wider variety of nutrients that they are able to consume when they're free ranging, the more that they're gonna be able to pass those micronutrients on to you when you eat their eggs. Now, if free ranging isn't an option for you, say it's too dangerous of an area for you to free range, you can kind of simulate the free ranging with like tractor type chicken systems. I won't go too much into that here. We did a review on a prefab chicken tractor. Um, I'll link that for you guys below, but even if you don't necessarily have the option to have chickens free range, there are ways to help them explore the land a little bit better so that they can collect as many of those micronutrients for you as possible. Moving on to pro number three, benefit of free ranging chickens. Number three, this is kind of a broad category, so I break it down in that blog post a little more for you. I am just calling this one happier, healthier chickens. And what I'm referring to here 
here is the fact that free-ranging chickens, as long as they're safe, they actually do a really good job of taking care of themselves. They're really good at feeding themselves. They're really good at finding dust baths. They're really good with hygiene. Chickens are so cute because they love to keep their feathers in order and they love to keep themselves bathed and clean. And obviously when you're dealing with livestock, one of the biggest things you're gonna be dealing with is animal waste. So largely because of animal waste, but also because it's just easier to pass disease along to each other. When animals are kept in closer quarters, they're more likely to accumulate too much much waste and they are more likely to pass disease, pass parasites along to each other. So one of the beauties of free ranging is that they get to spread out as much as they want to spread out. Nobody is cramped on space in our flock. <laughs> And it just overall kind of results in happier, healthier chickens for us. Major benefit to free-ranging chickens, pro number four, sun is kind of moving on me here, is in our experience, free-ranging chickens means less inter-flock drama. So when we free-range our hens, we get a lot less drama in the flock. And by that, I mean that our free-ranging chickens have basically no drama between them. A lot of people will reach out to us and ask us about bullying problems and ask us about feather picking. And honestly, I have to tell so many people, I don't know the solution of those problems because we just don't have those problems. Our chickens don't pick on each other because they get plenty of stimulation all day long. They get to pick who they want to be with their buddies and they get to pick to stay away from the ones that they don't like so much, which believe me, there are amazing dynamics in a flock of chickens. You, you wouldn't believe it. They're quite dramatic. So by allowing our chickens to free range, we basically get no drama between flock members. We've never had a bullying problem, never had a feather picking problem. If you have more of a confined flock, a lot of times people will have to provide stimulation, provide excitement in forms of different treats and different puzzles. That can help if you have to have a confined flock, that can definitely help. But again, I just can't provide a lot of advice on chicken drama dynamic and sorting out social issues in the chicken world because the free ranging has been such a help. When they're allowed to free range, they really are allowed to sort out their own issues and they're much happier that way. Another major pro to free ranging chickens, this is one of my favorites. It means less coop cleanings or fewer coop cleanings, less coop cleaning. So kind of how I was talking about the waste earlier, because the chickens free range, they distribute their waste over multiple acres of this property, although I don't think that they really go further than a few hundred feet from their coop most of the time. But nature does a beautiful job of breaking down chicken waste when there is enough space. So that's another area where we get a lot of questions from people asking about how many chickens per square foot and you know specifics on the deep litter method that we use. Unfortunately, I just can't provide a lot of direction or, or advice because it's so easy for for us because most of their waste ends up outside and evenly distributed breaks down into the soil and we never have to worry about it. So in my opinion, that is a major pro to free ranging. There is a little bit of a con side to that, which I will go into in a second. And if you free range backyard chickens, you probably already know what I'm talking about. I should also add that fewer coop cleanings or less coop cleaning also means that we spend less on shavings and bedding. So it's kind of another money saving aspect to free ranging as well. Moving on to benefit number six, pro number six is that, eh, I kind of touched on this before, but in my experience, free ranging chickens just means that they are lower maintenance overall. So basically my chicken care routine, I've done a couple videos on chicken care routines. I'll link those for you guys below. Uh, basically, it starts out in the morning. I get up whenever I get up these days, which is later. I let the chickens out. I check their food and water. If they need food, I give them food. If they need water, I give them water collect the eggs, and then they're pretty much just on their own until I go back in just before sunset and I shut the door to lock them in. One of the most common questions we get from beginning chicken owners is how do you get them to come back at night? It is just a little bit nuanced how you want to introduce them to free ranging. Chickens are really good at coming back on their own and kind of knowing where their home base is. However, if you don't have a transitional phase, it's possible that you might lose some chickens that get lost. Actually, one thing we learned is our little Polish chickens are completely helpless. I don't know how I didn't know this before we got Polishes, but they can't see. So we actually can't free range our Polish chickens because they can't. Okay, that's like a whole nother rant. Like, first of all, I can't believe I didn't know that. And second of all, it kind of ticks me off that we are breeding animals to not be able to see. But I know people love them because they're cute and obviously we're gonna love them and take care of them, but I, I feel kind of bad that I got them. Um, Total tangent there, that's somewhere I should have done a little more research before I picked that breed, I guess. So bringing it back to the fact that free ranging chickens, in my opinion, are, or at least in my experience, are just lower maintenance overall. 
Hero Coop Cleanings, uh, we don't provide them with dust baths because they find their own dust baths. In addition to being lower maintenance, just sort of day-to-day -day chores, they're also lower maintenance because they're a lot less likely to have disease outbreaks within the flock for reasons that I mentioned before. We've never had a case of mites. We've never had a case of bumblefoot. We've never had cases of a lot of these things that backyard chicken owners tend to deal with because chickens are kept in smaller spaces and they spread disease easier, They're, they can't move around as much, etc. I'm not saying it's backyard chicken owner's fault. We started out as backyard chicken owners ourselves. What we have noticed is that just them being allowed to have more space to roam results in healthier chickens and it means that we have to deal with fewer treatments, fewer parasites, fewer disease outbreaks, that kind of thing. Now right now, you're probably thinking, well, why the heck doesn't everyone free range chickens? She makes it sound pretty good. And if you are an experienced chicken owner, you know what I'm about to go into, which is the cons of free ranging chickens. There are cons, so I'm gonna go into them right now. I'm gonna start with the biggest con, which is probably obvious to most people, is an increased risk of predator threat. And by increased risk, I mean, there is a lot more risk of predator attacks, losing chickens to predators when you free range chicken. I think it is important to note that just because you don't free range chickens doesn't mean that you're not gonna struggle with predator attacks. Uh, in some cases, it can be even more heartbreaking in confined flocks because if you're dealing with a predator attack, usually means that that predator got inside the run or it got inside the coop, which means it probably decimated everything. And that is so heartbreaking. It's not something we've experienced, but that is so heartbreaking when that happens. So make sure to do as much research on predator proofing your enclosures and your runs if you have them. As far as free ranging goes, obviously there's not a barrier between the chickens and predators, which can include wildlife. It can include include neighborhood dogs. It can include cars, which aren't predators, but you know, people lose chickens to cars. The bottom line is there is a lot less we can control in terms of protecting our chickens when they free range, and it can result in more loss. Now, there are ways that you can mitigate that risk. So for things like air predators, like hawks and owls, making sure they're locked in at the right time at night. A good rooster can make a big difference when it comes to hawks and eagles. We have a couple little roosters. We are not experienced in the rooster realm, um, but we do have a couple little roosters. From what I understand, it depends on the rooster, it depends on your setup, so one rooster can't protect hens that are spread over hundreds of feet like ours are. So there are very nuanced ways to increase the amount of protection if that's something that you wanna do. Basically, if you are not going to provide like roosters or livestock guardian dogs or a covering overhead to protect from air predators, your chickens are going to run a high risk of uh, getting taken by an air predator. This is not gonna be a predator protection video, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. There are plenty of resources out there. What I will say is that knowing your property and knowing your environment, your specific situation for chickens is going to go a long way in this arena. So at our last property, people always told us that our chickens would get picked off by hawks or raccoons or coyotes or what have you. We did not lose a single chicken to a wild predator in the three years that we lived there. And that's because we were very fortunate we lived in kind of a small suburb, a small town that was surrounded by farmland. And when I grew up in a suburb that was surrounded by city land, I actually noticed a lot more skunks, a lot more raccoons, a lot more possums because they just didn't have anywhere else to go. When we were in that small town, we basically had no raccoon presence. We had basically no hawk presence. All the wild animals stuck to the farmland, stuck to their space. And in that little small town, our chickens were very, very safe, especially since they had a fenced in backyard. For people raising chickens, chickens in more of an urban environment, I would say that probably raccoons, possums, skunks, coyotes even, those predators don't have anywhere to go. You guys are all sharing the same backyard. So there's actually a pretty significant risk there. The other thing is in places like out here where there is plenty of space, we share this acreage with wild animals. That includes coyotes, that includes raccoons, that includes groundhogs, which are not a threat to chickens that I know of. And of course, it includes lots of hawks, lots of owls, lots of birds of prey. Now we that we know of have lost two birds to two birds of prey since they started free ranging here about half a year ago. And I will be honest, that's less than I thought it would be. One was a really pretty well-loved white chicken. Um, and I think the fact that she got picked off is mainly because she is a bright white target. She had no camouflage whatsoever. She got picked off pretty quickly. I think about 
three weeks after they, they moved to this property. Since then, the only other chicken we have lost is a small chick that was free ranging. We don't know if she was picked off. We don't know what happened. Our guess is a bird of prey just because she was small enough to be picked up and taken away. She was also lighter in color, uh, definitely one of the more tame chickens. So we're probably going to be not purchasing lighter color chickens from now on just because they are so much more likely to get taken by air predators. Okay, I'm going on such a tangent right now because the whole predator thing is really interesting and I want people to know that it is largely a part of chicken keeping unless you have a predator proof enclosure. That is one of the major downsides to free ranging. I will get back on topic now. Talk about free ranging again. Maybe I'll make a predator specific video, but um, long story short, I'm actually surprised that uh, in six months, we've only lost one baby chick and one regular sized chicken who was a white chicken, so it, it really kind of makes sense. I'm kind of surprised at how well these other chickens have done and kind of learning their street smarts and learning when to take cover and, and when to go in and that kind of thing. Not that it means they're protected from now on, believe me, I'm not under any illusion. I am looking forward to the roosters growing up because I think they will help against at least air predators a lot. No, we haven't had any raccoon attacks. No, we haven't had any coyote attacks. Uh, I think the dogs help with that a little bit, but leave your predator prevention tips below because I think that we all have learned the hard way, unfortunately. So there is a lot of valuable advice out there. Okay, I'm gonna try and go through these next set of cons a little bit faster. Con number two to free ranging your hens, especially if you live in a suburban environment, is that they are professional yard ruiners. They are so good at destroying gardens, at destroying landscaping, at destroying house foundations. Okay, maybe that's a little bit dramatic, but they do love to dig like right around the foundation of your house, which is not an ideal place if you're a homeowner. Actually, the whole reason that we got chickens in the first place was I was under the illusion that they were gonna eat like the lawn weeds, but not the actual lawn, which is like just shows how little I knew about chickens because they just eat everything. I mean, they will just decimate anything that they can possibly get to. They'll eat it and they will overgraze it and they will dig it up. So obviously that makes it a little bit difficult if you are a gardener like I am. They are very good at getting into the garden and uh, not, not even eating all your crops, but just like taking bites out of everything just enough so that you can't use it anymore. And the other thing that I'll say that they do to ruin yards is they poop everywhere. So kind of how when you are free ranging on a lot of space and like far away from the house it's really nice because we don't have that problem but we went, when we lived on a smaller suburban lot there was always chicken poop one of the funnier things about chickens is that they can be very social and they can actually really love people and so because of that you can have like 20 acres but if you have your chicken coop anywhere near the house where you guys are most likely they're gonna wanna hang out like by the house, on the porch, on the concrete. And where the chickens hang out is where the chicken poop tends to collect. So free ranging your chickens means that they have the ability to ruin your yard in more ways than one. Digging up landscaping. Chickens love mulch, by the way. Like they love mulch until it's all kicked around and then they don't love it anymore. So they just love to kind of spread it everywhere. If you guys have chickens, you know what I'm talking about. So that's all that I will say about that. Uh, if you have a confined flock, you don't have to worry so much about them ruining your landscaping, invading your garden, overgrazing your lawn, and pooping everywhere that you like to walk. Okay, con number three that I'll talk about is lost or rogue birds. And this kind of applies more to, I guess, more of the, the tamer breeds like the Polishes that I mentioned. While chickens are very good at exploring and then coming back on their own, just kind of knowing where their home base is and kind of staying where it's safest, they're not perfect and they do mess up from time to time and it's possible that chickens can get lost. In our experience, uh, it's been very uncommon. We've observed this two times. One is that little poor little Polish, once her feathers started growing in on her head, she got lost multiple times and was just in the middle of a pasture nowhere near where her buddies were calling for help. It was really sad, it still kind of makes me mad. And then the other more common time that we observe this is when chickens <laughs> They're not the smartest. They're not the smartest animals. When they find their way through something or they fly over something and then they don't think to do the same thing to get back where they came from. So when we lived in the suburbs, the chickens would occasionally decide to fly over the fence for whatever reason and then they would spend the next six to eight hours pacing back and forth in front of it trying to get back home because they didn't think to fly over it again to get back. Honestly, it didn't happen all that much, but they have kind of a smaller pen here, which is not a covered run, but it's a smaller pen. 
they help themselves out of that thing by flying over it all the time and then they if the gates close they cannot get back in so that's just another kind of like more minor risk of free ranging. It's possible that your chicken will get themselves into trouble and not either be smart enough to get back or just lose their way completely. So that's just kind of another risk that you run. Okay, it looks like I have two more cons for you. Con number four is potential egg hiding. This is not something that we have dealt with personally that we know of, but it's not impossible for a chicken to decide to create a nest outside of the nest box. From what I've heard, this usually happens in more like bullying situations where if a chicken is being bullied, they don't feel safe laying in the nest box, so they decide to start a nest somewhere else. And if you have roosters, this is that much more of a problem because it means that you can't collect those eggs and that you might end up with way more chickens than you know what to do with, which honestly, like don't, don't we all? But especially for people who maybe are trying trying to sell eggs on the side or who really depend on the eggs for their family. Maybe they keep like an actual reasonable number of chickens unlike us and they only get enough eggs from the number of chickens that they have to support their family. Every egg counts. So when you free range hens, there is more of a chance that you might miss out on a few of those eggs if a, if a hen decides to hide a nest and start hiding her eggs. Okay, the last con I'm gonna go over is not something that we've experienced ourselves, but I know it's one reason people can kind of shy away from free ranging, is that there is more of a risk of poisoning. Now, obviously there are toxic plants out there uh, there are a lot of foods that chickens can't eat, which I talked about a little bit in my video about what to feed backyard chickens. My personal experience is that as long as they are provided plenty of layer feed in addition to whatever they find on their own, they're pretty darn good at not eating what is gonna kill them. That's not to say they won't eat what's not good for them or poisonous because goodness knows I've seen our chickens eat plastic bags and styrofoam insulation. Now foods that are supposedly toxic and dangerous to chickens, even if I've accidentally fed them to them, they don't eat them. So I've fed them raw onions, I've fed them raw potatoes and they just leave them where they are. And I think that's largely because they're not starved. They know they have plenty of food so they're not gonna try something that they don't feel great about. That being said, I have heard chicken owners say that they lost chickens or flocks to some kind of wild poisonous plant or other. I don't know what those would be off the top of my head. Uh, something maybe to think about though. When it comes to free ranging and risk of poisoning, actually what I would be most concerned about is chickens getting into like artificial human made stuff that could potentially kill them. They don't seem to have as solid of natural awareness when it comes to human-made synthetic chemicals, that kind of thing that, that they shouldn't get into. So that's just, I guess, another consideration that you might want to make if you are considering whether or not to free range your birds. So you may or may not be able to see it, but they are kind of going in for the night because the sun is going down. So this is probably a good time for me to end this video. Like I said, I organized everything that I talked about. It's probably easier to understand fashion on the blog. So if you wanna click the link in the description, that will take you to our website with the blog post on all the pros and cons of free ranging chickens. If you're not already following us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. And as always, I would love if you guys would leave a comment with your experience, your chicken keeping setup. Specifically, if you free range your hens, what are some pros and cons that you've noticed? Why do you choose a free range or why do you choose not to free range? I'm a big believer that this isn't like a yes or no answer where you should free range chickens or you shouldn't free range chickens. Even though we've lost a few chickens and I know we we will probably lose a few more chickens in the future. With this property, my personal call at this moment is that it improves the quality of life so much for them. They're so much happier, they're so much healthier that I leave it up to them every day. I give them the option to free range every day and so far every day they have taken me up on it. So at this point in time, I'm not quite ready to lock them up. So please leave a comment below with your setup, your experience. You can help other people that way and we can all learn from each other. Yeah, they're totally, <laughs> they're totally going in for the night. So I'm gonna leave it there too. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.